Let's say you died. Uh, your heart stopped beating. Your, uh, your breathing stopped. Whatever. You're dead, okay? What happens? Do you ever wonder what happens after you die? I'm not talking about the afterlife, I'm talking about what happens to you. First is a collection of processes called autolysis. Self-digestion. Autolysis. You're going to have oxygenated blood left over from when your heart was beating. And your cells are going to suck that up and go as they normally do. They're going to take out the oxygen and in turn produce carbon dioxide as waste that you would normally breathe out if you were breathing. This carbon dioxide piles up inside the cells and uh, the, the pH goes up. Then the acid or base, I don't remember which, which if it's pH up is acid or pH down is base, that goes up and then the acid slash base burns through the intracellular membranes, intracellular inside cell, intracell. Then those membranes are like walls, they're walls inside the cells. The walls, which would normally be covering up different parts of the cell, are broken. So then the whole cell becomes a water balloony water balloon. And the lysosomes, which normally hold an enzyme for digesting everything from proteins to nucleic acids to f I don't know what else, they are released and they start digesting the inside of the cell. That's where the self-digestion autolysis comes from. There are three main contributing factors to the speed of autolysis. First is the strength, content, and quality of the enzyme. Autolysis in the liver is much faster than in the lungs. The liver tends to be one of the like enzyme standards of the body. They produce enzymes for the whole body. So that's why they have a better quality amounts. And whatever the third thing was. Second major contributing factor is water content. Your brain, for instance, has a lot of water in it. If you die and then you happen to be brought back by use of electricity to the heart, then you would, uh, your brain would not be so good, nor your liver. Sorry, but dying is hard on the body. Third major contributing factor is environmental temperature. Say if you died in a frozen over lake, if you fell in, like a lot of people do, and if you were rescued, it would be possible to shock your heart back up, and you could be alive even after you were dead for a few hours. If you died in the desert, however, there's not a lot of minutes for you. Less than five. Autolysis will eventually affect all the cells in the body. The most, the most visible effect on the organs will be flaming white, okay, not flaming, white pustules on the organs, like on the liver. Imagine a liver with white pustules on it. That would be, that would be what it looks like when it's dead. Those white pustules are part of the body's fixing system. Like if you get a splinter and it gets in there and you don't take it out, the body will put a protective layer around the splinter so that it doesn't, you know, it won't infect you or attack your body or, you know, something like that. So yeah, the body is trying to fix itself while it's eating itself alive. Hey, you do weird things when you're dead. These pustules are filled, or like water balloons, full of person juice. The water balloons will eventually rupture. It's not exactly like you're around to take care of them. And then your person juice will flow all over the inside of your body. Putrefication is when microbiological organisms start drinking your person juice. This is where such phenomena as exploding animals, farting dead people, and balloon carcasses come from. These bacteria, yeast, fungi, whatever, they're going to eat your person juice and waste. Like people normally do, people give off waste in three forms, gas, solid, liquid. But bacteria normally give it off in only gas form. It could be nitrogen, whatever, carbon dioxide, methane, etc. They're going to give off gases, and those gases are going to pile up inside you. That's why you see, if you've ever seen that many dead people, or dead animals, they're going to have balloonish figures in a few hours. As I said, exploding animals, farting dead people. So how long does it take to die after you're dead? About 4 to 10 minutes at room temperature, quicker when it's hot, and slower when it's cold. Jeez, it sounds like a recipe. Four to ten minutes at room temperature, and if you're planning on being shot soon, please do it in a hospital so they can revive you in a good less than four minutes. <laughs> the caster teaching lessons on how to die.